Investors, this is Tyler from Augury Research. In this video, I kind of wanted to discuss a trade that I made on Thursday, uh, give you guys a little bit of background as to what my process looks like, uh, how I go about um, a losing trade, and kind of how I'm thinking about it, uh, and, and you know, offer some food for thought for you know your investing and you know how to handle some of your portfolio moves and, you know, especially on the losing side, because this was a losing trade for me. And <clears throat> on Thursday after the trade, I was a little bit frustrated uh, because I felt that I did a really good job in preparing myself. Um, and unfortunately, the trade did not work out for me. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over an entire review process. And I generally do this with all of my investments. Uh, and I'll probably even, I'm going to even go into, you know, the beginning stages of my process, why I like the trade, um, and kind of how I go about my business. So without further ado, let's kind of jump in to the trade here. Okay, so first off, <clears throat> I'm actually going to show you guys the chart. Um, so this was the stock FTFT. Um, I thought this was a pretty good short opportunity. Uh, stock was up significantly on, you know, this news, which was basically these guys acquired a Bitcoin mining farm. Uh, approximately $9.1 million is what they're going to pay. And, you know, there's some more information about the, the deal in here. But at the end of the day, I kind of read this news and, you know, my first instinct, right? Like I always say, the very first thing I do when I wake up every morning is hop onto the news feed, see what stocks are moving and why. Uh, and this one, you know, <clears throat> after I read the news, kind of triggered me to become more curious because it is crypto and it is China. So immediately when I get those two things, you know, a spark goes off in my brain and I say, okay, this deserves, you know, a deeper dive. So <clears throat> first thing I did, I went to BAM SEC and immediately right off the bat, we got a late 10K, we have a late 10Q, uh, you know, a late 10K, a late 10Q, late 10Q, late 10K, um, you know, this is a mess. You never want to see, <clears throat> this is just a terrible trend. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see one or two of these, um, but to see this many is really, really dirty. Uh, there's probably a lot of dirt to uncover in this particular business. So as soon as I see that, <clears throat> excuse me, I get excited and I think, okay, this is, you know, a pretty decent opportunity. So I actually read this, uh, basically I, re I read, I read a decent amount on this company, but, um, I read this and I started laughing, you know, revenue decreased to $1 million in 2019 to 300,000 in 2020. So immediately there's no revenue coming. There's no money coming into this business. Now, uh, I see cryptocurrency, I see no revenue and I see them paying money to acquire new business. I'm immediately, you know, pretty excited here. Anyways, uh, basically what this company does is they have a, a crypto shopping mall. Uh, it's obviously not making any money because the revenue is 300000 uh, Meanwhile, this company is trading at a valuation of you know, $400 million. But I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, and then they also, it doesn't say here, but they also have this... Uh, it's called No No Girl, and basically it is an online streaming uh, platform where they sell stuff, right? I don't know if you guys have been on to. Amazon has this. It's kind of a new feature. Uh, Alibaba actually has this, and they do a really good job with it. But uh, this No No Girl, I couldn't even, I really can't find too much on it. Uh, and it's obviously not making money because, as we see here, revenue in 2020 was, uh, you know, 400000 and we can also see here loss from operations increased to 40 million, uh, increased by 40 million uh, to 51 million, uh, which is that's a lot of money to be pouring out of the business. Now we want to immediately after that, I'm a, I'm automatically thinking, okay, well we just burned through 
$51 million. How much money do we have? Uh, so you can go into the previous filing uh, really quick, and we can see, like I always say, the first thing you should always do is look at the shares outstanding. So uh, really quick, you got 42. Well, the shares outstanding is actually higher than this, but at this time it was 42.525. Uh, times I think the stock was trading at I shorted it at 760 uh, so right there that's 321 million but the shares outstanding have increased since then and in fact if I go on to my uh, my due diligence <clears throat> we actually have had over the last 10 years uh, the shares outstanding is up one one thousand percent. That's a lot of dilution, uh, and that's not too good. Total shares outstanding are actually fifty nine point five million times what I say seven sixty is what I shorted it at. So I, I was selling shares at a four hundred and fifty million dollar valuation. For I'll kind of just go in here, uh, or I'll show you guys here. Oh, we have it right here. FTFT. <clears throat> Sorry, I've been a little bit under the weather lately. But basically, we'll go here and we'll see. This is Guru Focus, if you guys do not know. It's a really great website. There's tons of financial data here. Uh, you know, we can see here revenue last 12 months, nothing. Uh, but we're mostly interested in the cash. Okay, so we have. Uh, you know, little to no cash. And I had here, you know, they had $1 million cash. Uh, and then I kind of went back and I saw that they had raised some money since this was last filed, uh, since this 10Q was filed. <clears throat> we've raised a lot of money, right? $8 million, $15 million, $11 million. So we see a trend here. The business is not making money. So how do these guys stay alive, right? They sell shares on the open market. And if we go and we look at a little bit longer time uh, chart other than what I just showed you, um, we can see that the stock has really ballooned. Okay, what's going on here? This is not trading view. Uh, but anyways, <clears throat> ticker symbol FTFT all right uh, and we can see that the stock regardless of the shares increasing we've actually seen the stock absolutely outperform go from a dollar to I mean six is pretty remarkable why is there so much hype around this business I really don't have a clue and I really don't care uh, you know, fact of the matter is it's not really important. Uh, Zach Hauser has a saying, uh, and, you know, short selling requires a lot of strategy. I think investing for alpha requires a lot of strategy. And to be strategic usually requires that we anticipate the response of other parties as well as the response of our future self. So after I read this, after I kind of, you know, take a look at the company, this $35 million was not out yet. <clears throat> and that was certainly part of my thesis is, okay, well, these guys can't go and buy unlimited businesses with no cash. So they have to raise the cash. And, you know, what, what better day to raise it when the stock is up uh, significantly and, um, you know, you're going to be dumping shares. And this, this company has a very good history of diluting shareholders. As we've seen, shares outstanding have increased 1,000% over 10 years. So I'm anticipating the response of other parties. And then, you know, you go to stock twits. <clears throat> and we see, okay, well, there's 20,000 people following this company for a cryptocurrency shopping mall and no no girl that's producing no revenue uh, I do not think investors know what they are doing uh, what they are buying and I think they're very optimistic you know as to the future of this company and there's real no 
there's not really a good reason as to why they're optimistic. Um, basically, you go on here, you see a million people, everyone's bullish, um, th this flies, yada, yada, yada. It really doesn't matter. It's kind of just a joke. I don't know what these people are thinking. I don't really care what they're thinking. You know, in my opinion, they're idiots. And, you know, Charlie Munger kind of has that that quote where it's like, you know, thank thank God for our, you know, stupid competitors. This company is going to continue to dilute the shareholders. We have a very, very uh, obvious past of really poor management. All of these filings are late, 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 late. Uh, that is not what you, that is not a responsible uh, management team. And they have a history of, you know, irresponsibility. And they also have a history, like I said, dilution over the last 10 years has been 1,000, right? We've increased the shares by 1,000%. Uh, that's how the business is staying alive. The business operations, the actual underlying asset that you're buying is not producing the cash. The cash is being produced by the shareholders <clears throat> and it's just really really ugly so to pay 450 million dollars for this business you gotta kind of be out of your mind um, in a sense so that's that was kind of the main thesis here uh, pretty decent chance that we raise now I have no clue that we're going to see this raise obviously I covered um, if you take a look here <clears throat> I really was pouring in short and this is a relatively large position for me because I feel pretty good here that you know if you look at the volume we're, we traded I think like 60 million shares at this point in the day so the entire float we traded the entire float right because there's only 60 million shares outstanding so if you guys ever heard of the term float rotation it applies here so we we trade you know, 60 million shares in this area. And, uh, you know, that means that this is this is where the bulk of the shareholders are priced in at. <clears throat> and obviously I covered, you know, hindsight like an idiot. But I have to also kind of what the second part of what I said is you have to be conscious of, you know, the, your future decisions and, uh how you're going to respond to different, uh, you know, environments in the future. And this is, you know, kind of part of my strategy where, you know, after a certain time, you know, I, I have to manage my risk. And in the grand scheme of things, this is a very large position for me. Oh, not very large, but, you know, a, you know, more than a double bet. And I have to be very conscious of, you know, what are the risks if I'm wrong here? And this is not the day that they raise. And they try to raise at higher prices. And, you know, at this point in the day, everyone is right. And if everyone is right, it's a very weird dynamic in investing. It's like <clears throat> when stock prices go higher, um, you know, it's like they're more likely to go higher. When they go lower, they're more likely to go lower. And I think uh, I'll show you a decent example of what I mean here. And when everyone gets bagged on this, after the news is announced that there is an offering, a direct offering, uh, let's take this off, right? Okay, so this is the day. Yep. So I'm, I'm, I obviously covered right here like a moron. Um, but as soon as the offering is announced, notice that there is no bounce. No bounce, no bounce, no bounce, no bounce. Why is there no bounce? Well, that's because the average position of shareholders, right? The average price that everyone's in at is all the way up here. So <clears throat> any bounce is met with people that are just, you know, gasping for air. They need to get out of this position. They can't, you know, handle the losses anymore. And, you know, what, if they don't get out in time, then we see them drizzle off, drizzle off, drizzle off. Um, and then, you know, obviously, if I was here, I would be, you know, the short seller is actually the one covering, you know, and, and somewhat holding the price up. Uh, when you have 60 million shares bagged up here, you know, they have to exit. They're all screwed. They're all, you know, they're donezo. Uh, 
And you know, once this, the price starts going lower, what do we see? It continues to go lower, continues to go lower. And it's a very weird dynamic, but we see it happen a lot in stocks where, uh, you know, I think, you know, Tesla is a good example. It keeps going higher and, you know, generally higher prices should, you know, scare people away from buying the stock, right? You should be, you know, I want to buy it low and sell it high. But a lot of people play it a different way where it's like, oh, buy the breakout. You buy it high and you sell it higher. And that dynamic works with selling, right? Instead of, you know, you panic sell. You don't sell when it's at, you know, not these, these people weren't selling when it was at, you know, 750. Instead, they were greedy and, you know, selling it when, you know, I'm not saying buy it, but uh, the dynamic changes. And, you know, that's kind of what we see here. So that kind of describes why I uh, was short this company and <clears throat> how I was thinking about it. Uh, you know, there's really not that much to think about. And I think the most important thing is to really take the time and figure out what's important here. Is this new acquisition important? Were, were there, you know, mining more Bitcoins? No, what, the, com the company has no money. That's important. Uh, the underlying business generated $400,000 in revenue. That's important. People are paying $450 million. Uh, that price that they're paying is also important. Uh, I think the very poor history from the management team is very important. Uh, and then, you know, the history of, you know, financing the company through shareholder dollars is important, right? Investing is all about, you know, having the business fund the shareholder, right? So the, the business pays the owner, not the owners, you know, pay the business. That's kind of like when you have a kid and you give the kid your credit card and then just run it up, run it up, run it up. That's not the, that's, those are not the investments you want to be in. Uh, you know, you don't want to teach your kid to just run up the credit card and you're left with the bill. I know that works. Um, some parents, I guess, operate like that. But, you know, if you're trying to make money in the market, uh, that's not really what you should be aiming for. You should be aiming for the companies that are going to, uh, you know, you're going to put some money out there and it's going to produce more money, more money, more money. And hopefully they don't, it doesn't cost them any money to grow, grow, grow. Uh, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, this kind of sums up the whole business. And while I am really upset because, you know, this ends up going down to like 550 and, you know, I'm short a lot. I'm short a lot, a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm really upset. Like, well, if I'm one minute slower to the, to exit, you know, I'm, I made a ton of money, but instead, you know, this is part of investing where you are going to take these losses and, like, like baseball, um, which is something I usually reference a lot, you know, you do run into situations where you are the better team, but you lose the game. And I think we see that a lot in sports. You know, I covered at 11, 11.06. The offering was announced at 11.07. You know, what are the odds of that? And sometimes that's a bad beat. You know, on a day-to-day on a -day basis, uh, you know, do I want to fold this hand? If I knew that the offering was coming, no. I was anticipating the offering was coming, but I also have to respect, you know, my rules and what has gotten me, you know, this far in my investing career and, you know, stick to the game plan. Every trade, I think you need to have a, an exact point of risk. You need to have a, a game plan that you follow. And if you're not planning your trades and you're not, you know, <clears throat> following your plan, you are at risk to, you know, the, the, the emotions of the market, the, the traps that the market will kind of set on you. So I think, uh, you know, am I mad that I didn't make money a little bit? I'm, I am upset because this was a really good opportunity and I did size in appropriately. I think I did, I think I did almost everything right. Uh, in terms of process, in terms of getting my homework done early in the morning, uh, being very, very patient because 
I wasn't sure. This could have, you know, trended higher and, you know, I could have gotten stopped out a different way and, and really lost money. This this was not – this from here to here is literally a, not even a drop in the bucket. I was basically a push trade for me. But, um, you know, I did take that risk initially. And unfortunately for me, uh, I did get stopped out. But – you know, everything else was right. My process was right. You know, I, you know, kind of went to the field. I got all my work in. Um, and sometimes the cookie just doesn't crumble your way. And I think that's what we see here. And it's not something that I'm going to beat myself up on. Uh, you know, I have a strategy that produces alpha, right? So I just need to stick to that strategy. Um, can I refine it? Can I improve it in some ways? Certainly. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't like watching sports where, uh, you know, if you ever go to like a high school baseball game, you see that the, the coaches will be coaching the kid while they're in the bat, while they're in the batter's box. And, <clears throat> you know, you telling the kid to, you know, keep your elbow up or do whatever when they're hitting is taking their head off of what they should be focusing on, which is, you know, squaring up the ball. Uh, and you know, when you're in the middle of a trade, it's not the time to be adjusting your strategies or whatever that is. So, you know, stick to the game plan and, you know, after kind of reviewed the process, right. You know, how could I change? What could I do here differently? Um, and you know, how does that work on a, you know, a long-term basis? Is that repeatable? Yes or no. Uh, you know, Majority of the time, you don't see a lot of intraday offerings. Uh, you know, this is something that I kind of would have expected to see maybe after market close or something, but this was a direct offering. So, you know, you know, the situation is different and every business is different. But anyway, that's that, those are kind of my thoughts. And hopefully, you know, this was a little bit um, of value to you, whether you're a long trader short trader, whatever it may be, kind of the goal here is to, you know, kind of anticipate the, the, you know, the different moves that parties will be making, right? Is the management team going to offer shares to stay in business? Yeah, certainly, they don't want to lose their jobs, right? And when the market is, you know, offering them a $450 million valuation for $400,000 in revenue in 2020, well, that seems very obvious to me that they're going to raise here, especially when they're out, you know, swiping the credit card, swiping the credit card, just tab it to the shareholders. It, it's obvious to me. Um, and then uh, what's the other party? The longs, right? And they're bagged. They're, 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 they're piled in here. They're piled in. So what's going to be their response when the stock does move lower? Well, they're going to, they're going to bleed. They're going to bleed out. 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 And uh, so for me, uh, that was the type of trade that I wanted to be on, um, the opposite side, right? Cause I had the longs, <clears throat> I knew how they were positioned. I knew how the management team was positioned. I knew the management history and I know, you know, the history of, uh, you know, the average shareholder and how they, uh, react to, or respond to, you know, uh, movement in stock price, let's say. So overall, that's the trade. Um, basically, you know, have an idea as to how you're positioned, what your responses are going to be, what the responses of others are going to be. And if you're constantly doing those things and doing your homework and seeing where the incentive is, uh, and, and doing your valuation uh, of, you know, in this, in this particular, you're valuing the bet uh, which is kind of based off of, you know, a risk point and the business valuation. Um, and, and information is really important, right? How do you come up with, with this, right? There's three things that you should be paying attention to. The incentives of all the parties. Uh, the valuation, right, of the bet and of the business, um, because that is the underlying asset here. And... Three, the information, right? This information is not, the news is not necessarily useful if you don't have a, you know, a, a full idea as to what the business looks like, 
Um, this is very surface material. This is surface material. And then you want to dig a little bit deeper by going into these filings. Okay, you know, I know that this information, what this information means. And I also know, uh, because I did write a Seeking Alpha article on uh, some of these Chinese acquisitions and how they work and how dilutive they are. Um, you know, that was something that I guess is, you know, I, I have an information um, advantage in that sense because I have done the research and I have studied that before. But, you know, these, if you do your homework, you know, you probably can alpha in the market, especially in these smaller cap stocks. So I kind of want to encourage people to get out there, do the work. This information is free to everybody. Anyone can go on this website and get the information. The sec.gov is free to all. So technically the information is equal. It's like how many people are going out there and utilizing the information uh, and, and accumulating all of the information that they need to make an educated decision? Not a lot. And we see that happen uh, you know, in stocks all over in this particular universe, especially the small cap, micro caps universe, is that people are not taking advantage of all of the information. They are lazy. They are, um, you know, just, you know, ignorant in a sense. I think a lot of these guys are more likely, a lot of the longs are more likely to go on to, uh, you know, stock twits than they are to go on to sec.gov. And that's a big mistake. They're playing the game wrong, in my opinion. So I'll wrap it up there. I hope, I hope that this <clears throat> video was somewhat useful. Uh, I kind of drag, dragged it out on purpose because I kind of want to kind of hammer in some of these ideas um, about being strategic and thinking about the different parties. I think that's extremely important uh, in, you know, investing for alpha, which is kind of what I want to encourage everyone at Augury to do. Um, look for these, these situations where you can, you do have an edge up on the competition. And, uh, when you do have a edge up on the competition, um, on the competition, uh, bet big, like I was betting big here and I'm not afraid to admit it. I know I lost, but in the grand scheme of things, Investing is a, you know, a reward to risk game. And by this stock getting crushed, even though I got stopped out and I was, you know, that's my plan of risk. I was right in a sense that at least I was taking risk and there was adequate returns for the risk that I was taking. And that's where a lot of short sellers go wrong is they don't play uh, setups that offer adequate return for the risk that they're taking. And some of them don't even put, you know, a risk measure on the table, which is very, very silly. Uh, like, cause like, like I said, you know, it is a reward to risk game. And, and, you know, my type of value investing, it, the game is nothing more than looking for mispriced gambles. And that's, that's actually Charlie Munger's quote, right? He says value investing is finding mispriced gambles in the market. And what I, what I, how I interpret that is, um, you know, the expected value, the edge, you know, finding edge in the market is value investing. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong about in value investing. Um, I would say I'm a value short seller cause I am searching for these types of opportunities. Uh, and in the grand scheme of things, you know, this has, you know, given my reward to risk granted, I am wrong here. But I hit this trade, you know, enough times out of 10 where it makes sense for me to put this risk on. And I think that is uh, what is really key. It's kind of like a slugging percentage in, in baseball. Uh, you need to be slugging. It's not about win or lose. It's about, you know, finding edge in the market where, okay, if I put this on, you know, 10 out of 10 times, <clears throat> I might only hit it 50%, but... I alpha, you know, 20% or whatever it may be. So I think that's really important idea to kind of comprehend and, you know, add to your toolkit for your investing. Uh, if you do want to alpha in the markets, you know, hold that idea, you know, close to you. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful. If you guys are looking for more information about investing, head over to the website augury.research.com. Uh, we have 
you know, a decent amount of material. We have the podcast on here. Uh, we have pretty good blogs on business, decision making, which I think is, you know, probably the most important um, aspect to investing, you know, controlling your behaviors. Uh, if you guys see here how disciplined my stop is, it's literally, you know, there's no negotiation. Uh, it's very, very precise. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to learn more, uh, kind of how I'm thinking about my investing, my post-trade reviews, um, and so forth, I definitely want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow if you're finding this on Instagram. Uh, subscribe if you're finding it on YouTube and tune in for more videos. And if you are, you know, if you are curious about something that I mentioned here or need to uh, ask a question, please don't hesitate. Throw it in the comments and I will get to it. So until next time, happy trading. Peace.